Peace, peace. Welcome back. Another episode of Mabia Muslim and Black in America with your host, me, Bilal Abdullah. Uh, it's been a little while. I've been sick, you know, a little bit under the weather. I'm still not all the way back yet, but I'm at 90%, so I'm I'm pretty good to go, alhamdulillah. Um, hope you all had a good week. My week was pretty good other than that. I had a few days off. I had I got some more days off this week because we're going into the uh, new year of the Gregorian calendar. So I got a few days off. So hopefully y'all will like this audio podcast, audio lecture, whatever you want to call it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Uh, if you want to donate, the link is in the description. I also did a um, I also did another lecture for a brother for the Black Dawa Network. It was about uh the biography of Khalid Ibn Walid and, you know, the lessons we can take to help build our community and build our warrior spirit. If you want to check that out, go to his page, Truth to Power. Um, other than that, let's get into it, man. You know, the messenger of, our, the, the, the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said about the Antichrist, the hour will not begin until 30 Dajjals have appeared each of them claiming that he is the messenger of Allah. That's in Sunnah Abu Dawood. So we see from this that there will be many smaller Dajjals and false prophets before the real Dajjal comes. These 30 will be the prominent ones. One of them were during the time of the prophet, the man Musaylimah. He used to call himself Musaylimah the prophet, but the prophet nicknamed him Musaylimah the liar. Others in the past were Aswad al-Ansi, Sajjad al-Kahina, and Tuleha al-Azdi. Some of the more recent claimants to prophethood are people like Mirza Hussein Ali Nuri, uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani, um, Elijah Muhammad, and Kareem Aga Khan. The prophet also said about the real Dajjal you know, that would come. He said he will have Kafir written on his forehead and only the believers will be able to see it. This hadith can be found in Muslim. Allah also says that most of mankind will not believe in Surah 12 verse 103, which means most of mankind will not see that this is the Antichrist, which also means most of mankind will follow the Dajjal. Now, if they do this for the main Antichrist, then in my opinion, even though these other false prophets and smaller Antichrist may come, the same will happen amongst the people. They will not be able to see that these claimers are Kufar, even though it will be clear as day, and they will still follow them. The prophet also said that most of the followers of the Dajjal will be Jews, women, and hypocrites. This hadith can be found in Ahmad. Now, I said all that to set the backdrop for how we're going to be going in today. It's a lot of Dajjals and false prophets in the so-called conscious community. And in reality, the so-called conscious community is a movement of the Dajjalic mindset. I've been watching them for years. And even before I got into watching the conscious community, I was brought up in knowledge of self by my father who had a vast library in our home as well, as he constantly gave me and my brothers lectures on life of blackness and manhood. Knowledge of self is a wonderful thing, especially for the black man and black woman. This is one reason I was eventually guided to Islam because knowledge of self amongst our people goes hand in hand with Islam. For when you research the history of yourself, you will see that Islam has always had a connection with our people from the beginning. The so-called conscious community, although having some knowledge that they can impart, is a movement designed to take you away from the guidance of Allah, slowly into Satanism, witchcraft, shirk, and into the mindset of the Dajjal, which is, do what thou wilt. Now, as I said, don't get me wrong, you can learn a lot about history of black people as a whole, even breaking down white supremacy and its tricks and snares, but the majority of the end result of all this knowledge is that God, Allah, is not for the black man. In reality, you can learn these, you know, conscious things from a book, 
but most of us don't like to read anymore. If you're a Muslim listening to this so-called conscious community stuff, you should be careful, as should I. Everything must be always filtered through Islam, not with your desires. But moving along. This community is full of agents, whether of the government or agent provocateurs who come into the community just to cause corruption and beefs and to take away from the knowledge you're supposed to be learning. If you go on YouTube and social media and look at what's going on in the so-called conscious community, everybody is exposing everybody else. Exposing them for being scammers, exposing them for being cult leaders, or exposing each other's beliefs and about their beliefs. It's, it's usually about following, you know, when, when it comes to their beliefs, it's usually about following, worshiping a personality, worshiping yourself and your corrupted desires or worshiping things other than Allah, like nature or the stars or other ancient gods. And what all this exposing does is basically exposing that they all on BS. Allah says in the Quran about their knowledge in Surah 2, uh, 13 through 20. We're gonna break this down. It says, and when it is said to them, believe as the people have believed, they say, should we believe as the fools have believed? Unquestionably, they are the foolish, yet they perceive it not. And what do these people say in the conscious community? They say these people who follow religion, particularly Islam, who believe in one God are fools. The whole premise of the so-called conscious community is that we do not need the guidance of Allah. We can guide ourselves just as well or even better. Religion, especially Islam, is a waste of our time. Only a fool would follow Islam. Only a fool would submit to Allah alone and not make their aql, the, their intellect, their God. Because this is what they are doing. And then amongst the, this conscious community, you have those who claim to believe as you believe, but they don't really believe. Allah goes on to say in verse 14, and when they meet those who believe, they say, we believe. But when they are alone with their evil ones, they say, indeed, we are with you. We were only mockers. These people are like the groups like NOI or Moors, nations of gods and earth, or even those who claim to be Freemasons. And before I go on, I don't want smoke with none of y'all. It's 2000, it's about to be 2019. We are going on our fourth century of being here. This is nothing personal. I won't be like other YouTubers who bash and trash talk. This is not what this platform is for, but I will speak candidly as possible. And as I said, this is nothing personal. Many of these groups may have helped to clean up the black man in some way, and they will have their reward in this life for that. That is a praiseworthy thing. But when you are being misguided to the hellfire for eternity, if you die upon such belief, then one must speak candidly for Allah's sake alone. These groups claim to believe in the God of Islam, and some even try to use the Quran to say so. We must, as I said, filter everything through Islam, the Quran and the Sunnah, the prophet already told us that he is the last prophet unequivocally. First off, even before the Hadith, we can go directly to the Quran, which should, end the, which should end the debate and questioning for any sincere believer. Allah says in Surah 33 verse 40, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not the father of any of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the last of the prophets. And Allah is cognizant of all things. Some of these groups try to go around this by saying, well, a seal is meant to be open. Or they say, well, Jesus is a prophet who hasn't died and will come back after Muhammad. They use this type of tactic to open the door for you to accept their prophet or their messenger. But regardless, if you open the seal, the fact that the seal is on there means it's done. And about Jesus, first, Jesus came before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he is not a new prophet. 
Secondly, Jesus, when he returns, tells the Mahdi that he has not returned as a prophet, but as a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith can be found in Muslim. But also the prophet Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah as well. A messenger is a prophet that comes with the book. Not every prophet is a messenger, but every messenger is a prophet. So even if these groups try to use the excuse, well, he's a messenger, not a prophet, it still doesn't work. You should see them as what they are, munafiqun, hypocrites. So when they are around the sincere Muslims who follow Quran and Sunnah, who worship Allah with Tawheed, they say, yeah, we believe like y'all do. But when they get along with a conscious community people, they throw all that to the side and say, nah, those Muslims are dumb. We really with y'all. They just following that Arab around. We got our own black prophet. They want to follow the Arab around. So really what they elevate is tribalism and race, even over Allah and his true messenger. There's nothing wrong with being about black empowerment. There's nothing wrong with about supporting our own and even working together to defeat white supremacy. But what is your goal after white supremacy is defeated? What is the game plan? What is the way forward? Just being black? Or are we going to be black people with a plan of governing ourselves in every aspect of life? Islam is the only religion or way of life that gives you that blueprint. Many try to come up with their own blueprints as well, but Allah's governing is the most just of them all. And always remember, a sincere true Muslim knows and believes in Tawheed. You the Muslim are the only true monotheist on this earth. All these other religions claim it, but if you break it down, you boil it down to the last compound, you will see that this is true. Tawheed means the oneness and uniqueness of Allah in all aspects of life. For example, Christians say they believe in one God, Yet they say their God is one in three or three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they say all of these are God while being different. This makes no sense. And I used to be a Christian. And they try all their twists and turns to make you believe in such a lie. This lie is so grand and so disrespectful to Allah, to God, the heavens almost explode out of anger every time a Christian or any other person opens their mouths and says God has a son, God is one in three, or God came in the flesh, or God came as an angel. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah 5, verse 73, they have certainly disbelieved who say Allah is the third of three, and there is no God except one God. And if they do not desist from what they are saying, there will surely afflict the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. And Allah goes on to say about those who say such things in Surah 19 verses 88 through 92. Let's see what they say. Surah 19 verse 88 through 92, Allah says, and they say the most merciful has taken for himself a son. You have done an atrocious thing. The heavens almost rupture therefrom and the earth splits open and the mountains collapse in devastation that they attribute to the most merciful a son. And it is not appropriate for the most merciful that he should take a son. So this is Tawheed. Allah doesn't have a son or daughter or any associate, nor does he come in the flesh of a human or any of his creation. You may say, well, the Jews believe in one God. Yes, they claim to, but even they describe Allah with human qualities. And some even believe that certain prophets were God in the flesh. Also, many of these rabbis believe that they are gods as well. And if you get deeper into the Talmud, you'll start going into Kabbalahism and all of that other stuff. 
also both have denied the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Jews in particular have denied the Prophet Muhammad and the Prophet Isa, Jesus. This is all against Tawheed. With Tawheed and filtering these so-called claimants of Islam, you will, you will be able to see through their hypocrisy. You will be able to see the Kafir written on their foreheads. And as I said, this is nothing personal. If I'm stepping on some toes, forgive me, brother. Forgive me, sister. This is nothing personal. This is about Allah. This is doing this for the sake of Allah. So Allah says in the next verse about their hypocrisy and how they mock the believers behind closed doors. Allah says in Surah 2 verse 15, but Allah mocks them and prolongs them in their transgression while they wander blindly. Verses like these always make me chuckle a little with pride on the inside. Not out of disrespect of the words of Allah, but because it's funny. It's, it's amazing to me how the hypocrites think they can fool the disbelievers and in essence think they can fool Allah. So they mock because they think they slick. But Allah sees all things. And it's funny because Allah's like, oh, you think you slick, huh? You mocking the believers. Well, I'm going to mock you. And on top of that, because of your mocking, you're going to stay misguided and stuck in your sins of shirk for a while longer. Not only does this mocking come from the hypocrites of the so-called conscious community, it also comes from the others in the conscious community that I was just mentioning earlier. As I said, the so-called conscious community as a whole, although it has some info, if you are not careful, its main goal is to lead you astray and possibly into the hellfire. May Allah protect us from that. Misery loves company. They want you to be lost like them. It was some rapper who said, misery loves company. They don't really love me. Allah then goes on to say in verse 16 of chapter 2, those are the ones who have purchased error in exchange for guidance. So their transaction has brought no profit, nor were they guided. If you read the tafsir of Ibn Kathir of this verse, it says that Ibn Abbas and Ibn Masud said that this verse means they pursued misguidance and abandoned guidance. Mujahid also said they believed and then disbelieved. And Qatada said the same as Ibn Abbas and Ibn Masud that they prefer deviation over guidance. So let's look at it. They prefer misguidance over guidance. It's not that they are just proud of being black and want to see white supremacy defeated. No, these folks worship their blackness and in reality worship themselves. They worship knowledge and they worship their evil and corrupted desires. See, the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet have been sent from when it was revealed up until the day of judgment, meaning it is the blueprint on how to conduct one's life from the moment you get up till you sleep, from the layman all the way up to the top of the governing body. It shows you how to run things and do them in a way that Allah has instructed and that will please Allah. And Islam is flexible in that it can be practiced sincerely by all people of all different backgrounds all around the globe. But instead of submitting to Allah alone, the so-called conscious community would rather choose misguidance or chaos over guidance and order. And this is what you have in the conscious community, chaos and disunity and disorder. People will do a two hour lecture on how the gods of ancient Kemet are manifested in the chakras. Or they will debate with each other on the most, most pointless of matters. And that's all that's going on now is arguing, exposing, backbiting, name calling. It's like a group of immature females. And not to disparage my sisters and women listening, but y'all know how it is. Y'all get a group of ladies together and it's going to be some cattiness going on inevitably. Then it'll turn into full-fledged beef. But the, but the one reason this happens in the conscious community is because their hearts are not one. And Allah is the controller of the hearts. And he, Allah, is the one who brings them together and makes them one. Allah says in the Quran in Surah 59 verse 14, Their enmity among themselves is very great. You would think that they were united, but their hearts are divided. That is because they are a people who understand not. 
But Allah says about the believers in Surah 8 verse 63, and he has united their hearts. If you had spent all that is in the earth, you could not have united their hearts, but Allah has united them. Certainly he is almighty, all wise. So they are a people who understand not. What is it that they don't understand? They don't understand that Allah alone should be worshiped with no partner. Another reason this happens is because you have the law, a large element of the so-called conscious community that teaches and believes that the black woman is God. People like polite, young Pharaoh, Seti, polite who was a known scammer who used to follow the code of Nuwapu, even to the point that he said Dr. York is his God. Pharaoh, whose name used to be Pharaoh Allah, which is a total contradiction because Pharaohs do not recognize Allah or follow his laws. They recognize that they are God. And Seti, whose name means of Set. And who is Set? Set was a homosexual or bisexual. He, he tried to rape both Horus and Isis. Seti seduces Horus, who was his nephew, and has sex with his thighs. And Horus places his hand between his thighs and catches Set's semen and goes to his mother Isis and shows her set semen. Isis cuts off Horus's hand or both hands that have this semen. She takes that semen, mixes it with some fragrance and places it on Horus's, her son's phallus until it becomes stiff. What? And in other stories it says, Horus puts his own semen on some lettuce which is Seti's favorite food. Like, what? Then you wonder why these folks in the conscious community be into all this sexual deviancy, touching little kids and whatnot. But I digress. They say that the black woman is God. None of them believe in Allah though, but they will say the black woman is God. This means placing the feminine energy over the masculine energy. This means she is higher than the man. This means chaos is the dominating factor and not order. Allah instructed man to be the Khalifa of earth, not the woman. And this is not a bashing of the women. Women are a necessity, women are a blessing, but we are dealing with reality here. So as I said, nothing personal, but we must speak candidly. Men were told by Allah to bring order, guidance, and structure to the earth and to his woman. When you reverse that, you will have chaos and disorder, and this is what you see. A lot of these dudes who say the black woman is God, they are emotional and argue and debate in a way that a female would, getting loud, yelling the B word over and over, cutting off the other speaker, bringing up irrelevant points. It's very off-putting and shows that a woman should not be your God. And these folks steady use pseudoscience to prove their alleged point. And this is what I mean. You must filter this so-called conscious community through Islam if you're gonna if you're gonna listen to it and try to get some knowledge from it. Allah is not a man or woman or human. And Allah didn't even like that the pagan Arabs called the angels the daughters of Allah. Allah is unlike his creation in any way, and he is above all of his creation. His kursi, his footstool, is the top of Jannah. That's the ceiling of Jannah. But moving along. Saying that the black woman is God even shows you how they are taking you into magic, into Satanism. This elevation of the woman principle to worshiping God-like status is what is done in many witchcraft circles. Just Google mother goddess worship and see what I mean. This is also in line with what I set as the backdrop at the beginning of this audio essay. The majority of the Dajjal's followers will be women. How do you think this will happen? By fooling them with such nonsense as this. The world has set the stage for it as well with the whole feminist movement, and you even see these black girl magic hashtags, which adds further credence to this Dajjal witchcraft movement. 
So why is the so-called conscious community in line with what the agenda of the world is pushing? They push this bull crap in general to the world because they want chaos and not order. But this chaos is considered order to them. This chaos brings about the emasculation of men and the destruction of the family, just to name a few of the things that it does. They bring these agents to push the bull crap to the black community for the same reasons. And also so that the men won't step to the front and take control back over their women, of their families, and of their community. They do this to keep us disunited and to lead us astray. What did the prophet say in the hadith of, uh, it's, this, this hadith is in Bukhari. And uh, Abu Bakr who said that when the prophet heard that the Persians had appointed the daughter of Kas Kasros as their queen, the prophet said, no people who appoint a woman as their leader will ever prosper. This is in Bukhari. So no wonder they bring this thought to the black community and to the globe. Once the woman's ego is inflated to that height with such nonsense, they will turn away from the obedience of their righteous men to the obedience of these other males who ascribe to that black woman goddess belief. Which leads to my next point. One of the main reasons they push this worshiping the mother goddess, the black woman is God nonsense, is because it's just like the church. You know how the pastor go up to the, you know, go up there and talking all that Bible talk and being godly allegedly. Women love a religious man of knowledge or a man of knowledge, period. And when the pastor had that offering plate passed around, the women will quickly give as much as they can for their church daddy. It's similar in the so-called conscious community, except that they're going to say the woman is God. They saying this to merely easily swindle money out of your pockets. Same way a pimp does. A pimp will blow a chick head up to get in that purse. They inflate the ego. And while you're high off being a goddess, they inflate their pockets. You even have some who try to call to go back to nature. It sounds logical in a sense when you hear that off top, you know, eating cleaner, possibly even going full vegetarian, being in the sun more, using more natural products, treating the earth with respect. These are cool things. But this getting back to nature stuff is just um, one of the many doors to enter into Satanism, witchcraft, etc. Because getting back to nature, once you go deeper into it, is just worshiping the mother goddess principle once again. What they call it, mother nature. Anybody in the conscious community that's calling you towards nature, you need to be wary of. That's calling you towards veganism. You need to be wary of them. Two in particular, the 13th son and some other guy named Nature Boy. Nature Boy is just an offshoot of the 13th son but they both on that nature stuff. They both have their own cult following and they both have areas for this cult to live. At one point, the 13th son had some community or was trying to build a community out in Florida where folks would live at. And this guy, Nature Boy, has an area outside of the country where they have their cult. Both claim to be Christ, except Nature Boy does it more directly. They both have harsh and violent domestic abuse backgrounds that show they have issues with women, major domestic abuse charges, and even Nature Boy himself was basically a homosexual prostitute for years, yet they claim they are Christ. And they claim that the woman is God. It's just a hustle. It's to swindle you out of money or swindle you out of them panty draws and lead you to the hellfire. These two dudes, in my opinion, are possessed by Jinn. If you saw 13 Sons' older videos, he used to always remind you of his little necklace chain that he was wearing, talking about some, you see those serpent eyes? He said beings gave him that chain. If you follow the story of Nature Boy, he told one of the mothers of his children that he was possessed by a demon and that Sometimes he can see that demon come over his face when he looks in the mirror. And this is why it, it, it is mind boggling to me because 
That lets me know that people's spiritual eyes are dead. How can you not see this? Somebody claiming to be Christ, but they doing all this stuff in their lives. And then people will try to use the excuse. Well, don't pay attention to the messenger. Pay attention to the message. The messenger that brings the message is supposed to be following the message. He's supposed to be living by the message. Messengers and prophets don't commit major sins. Messengers and prophets are perfect. The only thing they do are make mistakes. And just because you make a mistake don't mean it's always a sin. And even if you make a mistake, Allah will still forgive them. So don't try to come up here and tell me, pay attention to the message, not the messenger. That don't make sense. So if this guy's a pedophile and he's saying some good stuff, then I should just still follow him. No. Why are you following this person? Why are you taking all your belongings and going all the way out the country to go live with this person? I can see maybe taking some of the knowledge and applying it to your life, but there's no reason to follow this individual. Also, in my opinion, that veganism stuff, that vegetarian stuff is really just to make it easier for one to practice magic or easier for one to be possessed or interact with the gin world easier. I remember uh, like back in the day before I became Muslim and I used to try to be on that vegan stuff and I would meditate and all that stuff. Man, I almost, I almost astral travel. I almost left my body. I could feel myself almost leaving my body and I stopped that. Alhamdulillah, I became a Muslim later on, but I stopped that. And I noticed that me being a vegetarian made it easier for me to do that. So that's why I'm saying this. And if you research veganism and witchcraft, veganism and occultism, you will see what I mean. Now, if you want to be a vegan, then that's your business. But the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he ate meat, he ate vegetables, he ate fruits as well. And you will never be more spiritually higher than him. So if you're choosing to become a vegan, your intention should be for better overall health. Not all that other stuff. Because that's what begins to open the door to occultism and gin possession, interaction, all of that stuff. And what's crazy about these two dudes I was talking about, 13th Son and Nature Boy, it, I think these guys are MK Ultra agents. 13th Son tells a story of how some aliens allegedly came and healed him of his sickness and put some stuff into him. Sounds like MK Ultra programming, but made to sound holy. Even for the religious mind minded, it's like an inference to the prophet's night journey where the angels came and washed his heart with Zamzam. Nature Boy already said he was molested as a youth. And this is where they get a lot of their MK Ultra uh, agents. They get them when they're young and mess up their mind and, sp and split their psychology. Also, he said in jail he was in the psych ward. So the programming could have went down at, at that time as well. So how, how does the community not see the Kafir written in these people's foreheads? You know why? Because they have turned away from Allah. So the eyes of their soul are blind and they cannot see it. What they worship is their desires and their intellect and knowledge, which is basically worshiping Satan because the belief Satan brought because they believe Satan brought true knowledge and enlightenment to man. But knowledge can only take you so far or give you so much enlightenment. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The light that they think they have is very, very minimal. Allah says in the Quran in Surah 2 verse 17 about these people who think they have some type of light and guidance. Their example is that of one who kindled the fire. But when it illuminated all the way around him, Allah took away their light and left them in darkness so they could not see. They call Satan the light bearer, but this light, this fire given is nothing. They think they have all this knowledge and yet they are left in darkness and they cannot see. As I was saying, they cannot see. So they are left wandering. Allah goes on to call such people deaf, dumb and blind. And they will not return to the right path if they don't give up such things. 
they are blind spiritually because Allah goes on to say in verse 20 that if he willed, he could snatch away their real hearing and their real sight so that they would be in total darkness. But Allah is ever competent of what they do. Basically, Allah is saying, I'm not blind to what they do, even though they are blind themselves, but they think they are on guidance. I'm not blind to what they do. So wrapping this up, my warning to you was to be careful of this so-called conscious community. The inroad of you believing and following them is Satanism, witchcraft, polytheism, and eventually the hellfire if one dies on such things. May Allah protect us from that. Allah is the all-knowing, and Allah gives knowledge to whomever he wills. You're not going to learn something that Allah don't know or that he hasn't allowed you to know. If you read, that's what Ayatul Kursi is, is about. That's one of the things Ayatul Kursi is about. They will never encompass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills. So anything you ever learned in your life that you think you, that you think you just got it from nowhere, Allah allowed you to have that knowledge. So, and since Allah is the all knowing, then you should worship him alone with no partners. You're not going to sit in the sun and gain knowledge that no one knows. If you ever see these people, many would teach that uh, the sun rays give knowledge that you can download via your melanin and, and all this bull crap, which is really sun worship. You, you got to sit out in the sun for a certain amount of time and soak in the rays through your melanin. It's really just sun worship. But the knowledge they claim they're getting from the sun, most of the time, everybody been done said that knowledge before. They just ain't heard nobody saying it. So they think they the first one saying it. When the Dajjal arrives, most, if not all of the so-called conscious community will probably be following him. If people is already following these cult leaders, like the ones I mentioned and calling him and believing him to be Christ, then just think about the real antichrist when he comes, who will be given power to do wondrous acts that will amaze the physical eyes of the people. And one last point, a lot of these folks get into this stuff, you know, this conscious community stuff and leave the Dean behind, leave their religion behind because to them being spiritual is more exciting. Being conscious is more exciting. What they really mean is I love chaos and I hate structure. What do they say about the three main religions in general, the three uh, Abrahamic religions. It's too controlling. It's just to control you. They taking our ancestors knowledge. Allegedly. It's all about freedom and do what thou wilt with them. So, you know, that's why they love that conscious community stuff. They can switch up however they want to believe, however their whims desire and decide. It's like a leaf blowing in the wind because they're not under any structure and, and that's exciting to them. I can change up however I want to believe whenever. And to them in their mind, if I be a Muslim, that's too structured. I'll be bored. I'll be in prison. I, I can't have fun. But the prophet already told us that the life of this world to a believer is like a prison and it's like a paradise for the disbeliever. You know what that means? It means that this life ain't supposed to be all exciting and fun and do whatever you want. No, there are fun times here and there, but your life is to be structured and ruled by Allah alone and the laws he set forth for you to follow. Submitting to Allah alone will give you knowledge, wisdom, and foresight over time. But people want a shortcut. And that's really all it is. But the shortcut is the path the shaitan, the devil, Iblis, has laid out for you. People want to be spiritually enlightened, but don't want to do it via submitting to Allah's laws and giving up sins as much as possible, praying more, fasting more. No, they want to sit in the sun and get downloads and come on YouTube and be intellectually masturbated until they feel like they are enlightened. And one thing you will notice if you research all of these beliefs other than true Islam, all of them are all connected and boiled down to Satanism. All of them. 
And this is why Allah says in the Quran to the Kufar on the day of judgment. Why did you worship? The, he will say to them, did I not tell you to not worship Satan? He's going to say this to the Christian. He's going to say this to the Jew. He's going to say this to the person in the conscious community. He's going to say, didn't I tell you to not worship Satan? So when you study and research the teachings of Islam, you will see that it cuts off all roads and ways that lead to Satanism. But that's all. Thank you for listening. This is my presentation on the Dajjals of the conscious community. There are more Dajjals within the conscious community that I could call out, but I just wanted to give a general understanding of what's going on and to open your eyes. And I pray that Allah guides you all and continues to guide me as well. I mean, don't forget to like, subs excuse me, subscribe, share. If you want to donate, do that as well. This is Mabia, Muslim and Black in America with your host, Bilal Abdullah. I'm out till next time. Peace and assalamu alaikum.